Hello Gophers and welcome to our new video where we will be discussing about how to create your first protobuf file. We will also discuss about how you can compile this newly created protobuf file into a go extension file that you can consume in your server or your uh, client side. Before we move forward, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any important notification about new videos or series that we put across for you guys. Now comes the third part of the video. In the third part of the video, we'll be understanding the protocol buff uh, file. So the way how we can define a protocol buff interfaces, messages, services, anything that we want. So how do we define? So we'll try to understand what type of messages properties are available. What are the different data types available for protocol buff uh, messages? How we can create enums and what are some reserved keywords? So what is a reserved keyword specifically? So let's go to the code uh, and I'll show you a code where I have written this uh, protocol buff, a sample protocol buff uh, file for you. So first thing that you have to create a file with an extension P-R-O-T-O, proto. So this is the extension for protocol buff file. Here, the first first thing that you need to keep in mind is syntax. So syntax, once you write the syntax, that is proto3. So this is the latest, latest protocol uh, buff version that we have. We also have protocol uh, 2, which, we, which was the older version, but we'll be using the new one. Then the package name. Now this is important because once you compile your protocol buff and you compile it into the the language of your desire let's say go or c plus plus java or any language that you want this file to be in so that uh, in that file this package would be the uh, packet that you will be importing in other files as to consume this messages and everything this is optional or uh, option of go package so this this is to mention that uh, when we compile and we give an uh, de uh, destination path in the destination path what should be the uh, folder configuration where this output should be put into so normally i would give this as same as package so that wherever my files uh, this proto file is there there i create one more package file package folder and there these uh, this uh, protocol buff compiled dot go extension file is present now to define any message message is nothing but uh, any sort of request that comes into the server or any response what you send in so this is this is kind of contract between the server and the client so what is expected by the server and what is expected by the client to receive so right now what i have done is i have a message that is a request message that this is particularly expected by the server and then i have also defined a message that is expected by the client or would be expected by the client and this is responsibility of the server to send this message in the same format now message is the keyword which which gives protocol buff to know that okay this is the contract or model that i will be receiving or sending uh, now, when you start defining the fields, uh, you you define the data type of the field, name of the field, and then you give a tag to each field. Now, these tags are very important. You cannot, for backward compatibility, when you try to remove some field and add new fields, you have to be very particular about these tags. So, let's say, uh, because this RPC, in RPC, the message is formatted in the binary form. So when you are sending the message across, the message is formatted in the binary format and then it would be sent. And at the receiving end, again, the binary is read back in the reverse process so that it receives the message. So because of this, you your each field has a number specified. So let's say number uh, name is on number one, then address is on number two, then age is on number three department on number four and email on number five now let's say someday i go ahead and remove the address field address over here and uh, i introduce one more field let's say uh, i i introduce one more field as phone number let's say string 
mobile number equal to 2 now this will this will definitely give an error for backward compatibility for new new consumers they would be knowing that 2 is mobile number but for the old clients 2 means 2 means uh, address for them so they would be misinterpreting the messages and there would be errors across that so that is something that you should be very very uh, particular about when you remove some fields and take care of that part now to take care of that part we have a reserve reserved keyword where you mention the tags that you you have reserved and they cannot be consumed inside uh, inside this so if you give like two or let's say three uh, so these these tags cannot be used or you can give two to ten so any field cannot use a tag between 2 to 10 so this is the reserve keyword that you should be using when you delete some field specifically so that there is no backward compatibility issue or any new developer coming in knows that i should not use this field number so over here we also have an optional parameter where uh, we mentioned that uh, this field is optional so there can be no value sent from the client or to the client uh, in this field. So this is completely optional. So uh, uh, accordingly, if the message is formatted and it does not have that value, it does not give an error. It knows, yeah, okay, I can, uh, this field is empty and it's okay to have an empty field at times. I have defined an enum. Now in enum, it is important to have a zeroth index over here because that is considered as the default value of the variable or the property that you define for this enum. So I have the DEPT, which is of type this enum. So the default value, because this is optional, so the default value would be assigned to it. So default value would be the zeroth index that is sales. Now, if you if you have used protocol buff two, there we had a specific syntax for uh, default value, but that is now removed in protocol three. Uh, protocol buff three. This is repeated. This is sort of list that you want to send in or receive. So list of email. So this email would be a list of string specifically, and we would receive a list of email. It can be n number of emails that you receive. So this is how you define a repeated fields. It's sort of list there. So this is how you define your message. There are there are many rules, many other things that you you might want to check out. So I would definitely recommend you to go to this page where where many things about the protocol three uh, proto three is given to you about mapping one one of many uh, one of an at least one or those things so many one of means uh, either of these three fields let's say i have three fields so either of these three should be present you will not have a, a combination of two or more than two from these three but only one from these two three fields you you can specify that as well so this is specifically for radio button uh, option like male female so any one of them should be true right so those kind of things and and many other things nested data types and and there are a couple of things that you can go around and explore on this website now we have a service this is this is purely an interface so this is an service with name employee service and it defines an rpc method with the name add employee and we have given the input parameter type and the return type for it now definitely this will not make any difference if you give the return type as employee request because there can be scenarios where input and output are same so it's up to your use case how do you want to do it so this is how you define a basic proto uh, file there are many things that we would be discussing in 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 the later part of the series when we start implementing this to communicate between the services now the last step that we have is how to compile a proto file into the extension that we desire now let's start by understanding how we can use uh, the proto compiler that we have uh, downloaded and installed to compile our proto file 
Now to compile uh, the proto file, uh, there is a syntax. Uh, there are many tags, uh, many uh, options available, but we'll be using the minimum ones. So I'll be writing down this syntax in the description for you guys just to have a look at it. Uh, this is like proto C, the compiler uh, binary file name which would do the uh, magic. Hyphen I is uh, there in which we have to specify the source directory path. So source directory is where my proto file is present, the folder path. Then the output directory file path. So we have mentioned go out. That means it would have to generate a go file. If it is Java or something, there the options are correspondingly available for those as well. So it it asks me for the destination directory for the Go output, and then space the complete file path, including the C drive or anything. So it should have the complete directory path till the proto file exactly. So if you see, uh, I have already written this syntax for us so if you see this is proto proto c hyphen i in hyphen i i have given the complete path of my source directory my source directory is rpc so my service then authentication and then rpc so this is my service name authentication and rpc this is my source directory the out directory is where i want the output to be Placed and that output has to be placed inside another folder that you have mentioned in the file proto file. So this this directory I have mentioned that I want it in the same RPC directory. I don't want it to be placed in some other directory for now. So it would place in the RPC directory plus the directory structure that I have given in the go package. So it would create there and then I have given the file path, complete file path, which I want to compile. So employee.proto. So I have listed the path till here. Now let's delete the pre-generated file, which I generated earlier. So that we generated freshly. Now, if you see this command has executed successfully, if I refresh, I get in another folder that is authentication. And there I've got the go file. Now in the go file, the package name is there authentication because we mentioned it over here and there is the complete protocol buff which has see if you see this is the enum that we had and there are there is lot hell lot of code for converting that protocol buff file to the go file so if you see there is a struct that it has created and there are a couple of methods assigned to that struct uh, which would be helping you to pass in the message or receive the message, read the message and those kind of functionality. So it has added all those. So see if you see get address, it will have set address as well for you. Uh, so those, so see get ID and those kind of methods are available. So, so this is how this converts the complete file into the desired uh, file output. So right now we are only concerned about converting into go file so i've converted in it into a go file so the, that's it about how to use the protocol buff file and if you if you go around and read the article on the on the website that i would be listing in the in the uh, description of the video you'll have a complete detailed understanding about what is proto proto 3 or protocol buff uh, all about so do not hesitate and go ahead and read this article. This is very good descriptive article for anyone who is new to protocol buff or gRPC. So thank you for watching this video. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notification on any new videos that we put across for this series or we create new series for some kind of new topics. We would also like to hear from you guys in case you have some suggestions on how we can improve or what what topics do you want uh, us to cover for you guys that could help you in improving uh, somehow.